Hey folks, Steve here with a special unboxing video for you today. We are going to be looking at Joe Balkowski's The Korean War, June 1950 to May 1951, published by Compass Games. I just got this in the mail today, and I couldn't wait to crack it open. And we're going to do the unboxing video here for you, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Now, um, I'll say just as a, a preface for this one that... Uh, I th this is like the first of a couple of games that I have coming that I'm sure lots of other people do as well <laughs> that are basically reprints of games from several decades ago or a few decades ago that are getting a little bit of a facelift, a new edition. Uh, so this is really the first in a handful of games that I'm hoping to get this year. Um, and the original version of this game was published uh, by, I believe it was Victory Games in... 86, 1986, so it's been a while, um, and, you know, for some folks, when they uh, see these sort of, you know, you can see it's part of the Designer Signature Edition series from Compass Games, these sort of reprints of old classic games. Um, it's interesting for folks because maybe they've played uh, the original and they, they you know, want to get a new, new version, see what has changed. Uh, maybe they're old, you know, versions that are maybe older than their kids or something. Um, are, are beat up and the counters are, are old style, harder to read, whatever the case is. These sort of reprints provide an opportunity for a freshening up of those classic games. And for poor folks like me who have not had a chance to play these classic games, uh, a new opportunity without hunting down a very expensive uh, copy elsewhere on the secondary market. So a very cool opportunity um, that you know publishers, uh, you know Compass Games and others, that are doing this sort of thing. So, really cool. Now, uh, this covers obviously the, the historical Korean War. Um, there are obviously other games that you might know that I, I'm looking at or have been playing that cover the same conflict, right? And it is just a different uh, a, a different system, right, from, from maybe other games. This is, uh, you know, you could see it as traditional uh, Hex Encounter um, with... You know, really, I, I've, I've read through the rules. It has its own particulars here. Um, oh, I've got it flipped. So if we look at the back of the box, you can see what comes in this edition. It is four maps, so things are blown up a little bit from the original edition. Uh, three counter sheets, so that's pretty good, right? Three counter sheets. That, that is um, about the same number of counter sheets as other games that cover this conflict. Uh, rule book with updated historical notes and I will say I have seen the uh, historical notes for the original edition and they're very uh, very in-depth and, and interesting uh, an interesting read so I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, this having that updated uh, updated historical notes and we'll kind of see that uh, charts and booklets numerous player aid cards and displays numerous it's interesting 10-sided die and, and all this you can sort of see a snapshot of what the map will look like. I'm actually really interested to see the map because I don't know how I feel about the map yet until I see it in person um, when it's printed like this or when it's just um, a, a graphic art on a website. The lowest uh, elevation terrain here just looks very flooded because it's a blue off blue. And it, I just don't know how I feel about it yet, but maybe if I see the map in person and, and laid out, I'll feel differently. Um, and then the whole blurb, which if you want to pause and read that, I'll leave that to you. And we can see some of the counters that uh, are coming up. The complexity, 7 out of 10, 1 month per turn, scale, 7.5 miles per hex. Uh, 1 of 2 players, solitaire is 7 out of 10. There's no hidden units, but you do have some things that will be hard to trick yourself on. And uh, the average time of play, if you're going to go for the campaign game, which... Um, that would certainly be my speed to try. It's 20 plus hours. So this puts it um, obviously uh, not as long as, say, uh, your OCS uh, Korea Forgotten War game, which would be a huge amount of time. This is probably not very far off from Korea uh, uh, Fire and Ice, um, which is a you know more modern game uh, designed on the conflict in terms of you know the full campaign. It it's probably all similar. It's just that, you know, between this game and, and Korea, Fire and Ice, 
just different systems that that drive it. And so it would be kind of interesting uh, to compare those games and, and kind of see, you know, what what really differentiates them quite a bit, I, I think, ultimately. Um, so I will get the shrink wrapped, shrink wrap ripped off here, and we'll see what we get. Um, oh, okay, something we need to uh, be aware of. I'll get this flipped around. Uh, rule 1.0, add numerous unit factors and tables were changed from first edition. Okay, good to, good to know. Turn track on the map has AMP on turn one. Uh, should not be there. Okay, so we'll, we'll cross something out, I guess, but interesting. Okay, the first edition stuff won't matter to me, not having played the first edition, but there you go. Uh, we have a playbook. This is a non-glossy paper, uh, two-column format, and it is uh, color, ooh, and color examples, uh, which are always great. Um, <laughs> kind of see, uh, there's a nice spread here. You can kind of see what the game will end up looking like. Um, so the, uh, the playbook here appears to uh, cover... So we've got the table of contents, uh, some introductory scenarios. Those are always helpful. Uh, additional rules on the advanced game, which may not have fit in the main rule book. Um, and then we have the historical perspective. The game is history, Korean culture, and geography. Uh, so some additional information on, on all of that. So the playbook really it, it would appear to include some of the rules uh, for the advanced game, which is really the campaign game, and then all the, the extra bits. And like I said, I've seen and read through some of the content for this. Um, I've not played the original game, but I've read uh, some of the text for this stuff here. Very interesting. And and I really appreciate, you know, when a game provides all those sort of extra historical details uh, and stuff to read because it helps. Um, I, I think it just helps, you know, be a primer if you're not very familiar with uh, the topic to address. So, uh, lots of lots of good stuff here. Um, looks like everything is laid out in a very clean format. Uh, if you're going to look at doing the setups, um, looks like it's pretty pretty straightforward um, with the uh, setup hacks and then a reinforcement schedule along the way. Um, not sure there's much else to call out there on the back. Um, it looks like you got some suggested reading, some continuing. Uh, verbiage from, I guess, the previous page, and a look at some of the historical designations uh, for the units. So, looking good there. I, I'm really looking forward to reading through all of that with, with any updates that may have come. Um, looks like they actually gave us two dice, not one die, uh, as the back of the box says. So, happy to have two dice rather than just the one. That's good. We have the uh, rules of play. Now, um, Keeping in mind that you've got to factor in those additional advanced game rules that are in the playbook. This is coming out at 40 pages. Obviously, a few pages are introductory type stuff. Um, but you can see the uh, the rules do take you all the way up through 40, where you have the index on in the back. So uh, there's some special rules there for the first couple of turns. You can see there's some uh, great photography included uh, to kind of help set the flavor uh, we didn't. I didn't see as much of that in the playbook, but obviously, you know, in the rulebook, it's just a nice touch to be able to add uh, some stuff. You can see there's a lot of uh, examples. I think as I just kind of flip through here, um, the PDF of this was available on the Kickstarter page for the game. They had done a small Kickstarter effort just to, I think, get help help get more pre-orders, and they had published the PDF on there. And I had read through that a little bit, so everything is in. Uh, really, really clear text, two-column format, with the pictures, with the examples, um, lots of example boxes. So this is an excellent touch. I do not know how much this was in the original. I really could not tell you off the top of my head, but it is as a product for itself as of right now, I really like seeing that level of example boxes provided to use. Um, really, really helpful. Uh, when you try to understand the game intent of a rule. Um, so, so far, so good. I mean, this is not a full evaluation of the rules or anything, um, but I think this is in, you know, I, I think it's solid. Um, 
and you know, having it be full color uh, is nice. And then I actually prefer non-glossy rule books like this because if for some reason I need to make a note with pen or pencil, I'm much easier to write. And if I need to erase, if I'm writing in pencil on, uh, on this type of paper, um, we've got some player aids here. So oh, it looks like these are, um, basic game scenario three. So it looks like some of these can be used. You set these up based on what scenario you're playing to track different types of things that are relevant for that given scenario. Whereas you do have, it looks like this is a standard play raid chart with combat results table and armor table, combat value modification chart, uh, sequence of play and advanced sequence of play, and more information on uh, the terrain. You can see, you know, it, rather than have a lot of, um, I guess, like an illustration of the terrain, it, some of it's seemingly color coded. So you have like clear, broken is green, rough is brown, mountain is red. And then uh, that says peak, and it's sort of dark red brown with a little bit of white highlighting. Um, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's clear, right? It's going to be very clear when you're looking at the map, and that'll be helpful. Um, aesthetically, you know, I don't know if that's to my taste necessarily, but um, if it works, it works. Uh, some additional player aid. Uh, looks like this is more oriented for the UN player with the blue, but you, know, you can see on the back, UN escalation chart. So um, each player having specific uh, player aid charts, helpful. Uh, there's some more example, uh, counter player aid sheet, additional charts. So North Korean initiative, North Korean depots, UN depot tables on this player aid chart. Also example units on the back. Uh, UN close air support tracks. I suspect this is going to be used for your campaign game because we saw that one that was for, you know, the smaller game scenarios. You didn't need as much space, but you had a chart very similar to this. So um, just based on what scenario you're playing, I guess you'll need to make sure you're, you've got the right aid sheets set up. Um, there's a reinforcement chart here for the UN across the whole game. More uh, aid, aid stuff on the back. Um Man, they're, when they say numerous player aid charts, they're not kidding, man. Um, and, okay, and they have what looks like are the special rules for those first few game turns where things may be different or, or there's an accounting uh, needed of special rules. It looks like there's a breakdown here um, for you to follow, which I think is very helpful. Um, you can kind of run through... All of that. We'll have to see how that works in, in actual play, but um, very, very helpful. Any game that has special rules or considerations across the life of the, the game turns, having a chart like that just helps a whole lot. Um, here is a fold-out player aid sheet. So it is, um, it looks like very similar in terms of content as other player aid sheets we have, except it opens up like a book. Um, I think this is probably the main one the UN player will want to use, and then the extra charts um, are, are just additional help or, or use, it seems like. Or depending if you're playing with more than two players, if you're you know having a buddy help uh, control a faction, then everyone's got enough player aid sheets that it all works together okay. Uh, with that, we are to... The map sheets now, um, this is going to be really hard for me to set up and show, mostly because uh, the table that I would be using to do that is currently holding a different Korean War game. Um, so I will just sort of unfold one of these guys. This is going to be your upper right, uh, northeast part of North Korea. Uh, so you can see there's a whole bunch of charts repeated, so both on map and in your player aid charts. So there, you know, wherever you look, you're gonna be able to see the charts and reference those. There are a few uh, tracks that you'll have markers on that would be important to note. Um, and then you can, can kind of see just an example of what the map itself will look like with uh, different regions of the map uh, broken out into sections like this. Um, you have particular areas, uh, um, towns, cities, uh, and the road or rail connections for them. 
Um, and, and right away, I'm already thinking I should do a map comparison video of all my Korean War games. Um, the, the I think that it, it looks better. It does look better in person, the, the low clear versus the water. Like I can look at it and I know what I'm looking at and I can say to myself, yes, that is the uh, lowest elevation, you know, clear terrain stuff. Um, I will say I probably might have preferred the color being a little bit different, maybe more of a white or, well, it, it's almost white, but it looks blue to my eyes and my current lighting. Um, so maybe just some other color might have been better. I, I don't know. I think like this looks very much like something you might see in a topo topographical book or something like you're looking at almost elevations, not just terrain. Um, which has its own, I guess, aesthetic qualities to it. I, I personally, I, I like pictures of, you know, I, I just like it differently, I guess, personally. But I think this will work uh, for for playing the game, right? It's not, it's not ugly. It's just different than maybe I would have preferred. But I think it works, and it is clear where the rivers are and kind of how that is situated. So I, I'm happy for that at the very least. Um, so we won't, we won't look at every single map. Um, I just don't have the space right now to do that, but. At some point, we will have uh, things broken open. And just to kind of show uh, as well, you can see there's Pyongyang as a city space um, and ports and and so on. So you can see all of that. Again, the, um, the almost white but kind of light blue, I don't know, uh, is throwing me off a little bit. And then we have the counters. So these are... Uh, these look like they are brown core quality. It's a little hard to tell. If I focus, you can see that a little bit. comes with these uh, little belt straps. Um, sometimes see this in other games. Um, I'm just going to rip that off. I don't need to keep these. Um, and so here are the counters. Now, I'll, I'll tell you right away, the, f the feel of the counter thickness is nice. I'm not sure how these are going to punch yet. You can see the sprues are, are obviously there. You'll have to navigate around. Whether or not I'll clip the counters, I have no idea yet until I get them out of out of the sheets. Um, but they do feel very solid. They're solid counters, um, so that'll be nice. I'm sure they'll play uh, nice. Um, looks like yeah, it's really two and a half counters. So we have a full sheet, a second sheet. And a third sheet with, with some blank counters. Now, I like having blank counters. I use those. I keep a stock of them in case I need them for some reason. It looks does look like there's a lot of um, open space counters that weren't used for something. Um, so it's always, you look at that and wonder, you know, maybe could have used more control markers or something. I don't know. Um, if I'm not even sure how many control markers there really are. It looks like there's like these kinds. Um, maybe we could have used more of those. I don't know. Uh, the only thing I'll say is, like, the colors um, have a kind of subdued color to them. And there's a distinction, like, if you're looking at this being a communist side, there's this sort of, like, off brown. Like, they're both brown, but they're different shades of brown. So if you're if you're trying to set up your units, you need to make sure you're really looking and validating uh, who, who you're looking at. So um, the left side here is North Korea, and the right side here is... Uh, communist China. So, you know, similar, depending on how you look at color. I mean, I can tell the difference, obviously, but um, as you're looking, there there's a spread. You should be able to differentiate for the most part. These ones would be the only one, you know, you'd want to double check because you're really just looking at three different kinds of brown, right? Like a tan brown, medium brown, kind of a darker, almost red brown for, I think these are the Soviets. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. Um, so not a huge amount not a huge amount of counters. Probably won't take you too long to punch punch all these and get them situated. Um, and there you go. So um, I am looking forward to checking this one out in more detail. Um, when they said numerous playing player aid cards, I mean, they weren't kidding. There's so many. <laughs> You'll want to organize those guys, uh, but much appreciated. And then, uh, you know, the rules, again, if you look at, at the the majority of the rolls are going to come out almost 40 pages. Um, and then the additional sort of uh, campaign game rolls 
or a few pages more than that. Um, in, in my time of evaluating the PDF of the rules for this that was available on the Kickstarter webpage, it truly, to me, does not seem like a super complex game. So it's like that's 40 pages of rules, but it's not a daunting 40 pages of rules. It, it, it should make sense. Um, it is hex encounter. You're moving units with factors. Uh, it handles armor support as distinct counters that can move around. They're not like, here's an armored unit. It's here are armor assets that can be assigned to other units. So it is sort of a balance between, say, like OCS Korea, where you have distinct mechanized counters on the board that take losses and can be replaced and say Korea Fire and Ice, where you have a very abstracted like tank support chart, it, it, it sits probably closer to what I think folks are used to and saying, hey, I have tanks, they are here on, you know, with this counter on this unit as an asset specifically. Uh, so that's, that's, we're going to juxtapose other games. That's, you know, maybe one major difference depending on how you want to look at it. Um, but yeah, so certainly want to do, uh, more with this one, uh, and check it out. Um, looking forward to other classic games that are being reprinted for me. This is a great opportunity to, to try something that, um, many folks really like. I mean, this is a well-regarded game, so it, you know, it, it, it has stood the test of time for a lot of folks, and this is your opportunity to try it if you have not yet had an opportunity and haven't been able to track down an old copy from 1986. Um, all good for you. So um, hope you enjoyed this video. I will have more videos going on when I can get to them. I, life is busy as usual, but uh, like the video if you uh, like liked it, and subscribe if you want to see more stuff, and uh, let me know if you picked up a copy of this and you're playing it and you like it or, or whatever, let me know. Um, but otherwise, we'll let you go, guys. Uh, take care. Keep on gaming.